So let's begin. It's uh, with a short talk. Uh, and we'll get started. Uh, this is the lineup. Uh, we get started with thank you. So the subject I'm going to talk about today is about the d-dimensional anom uh, the correspondence between d-dimensional anomaly and d plus one-dimensional topological phases. This subject has been intensively studied. For example, by now we have known that a uh, theory in d-dimension with global gra uh, glo uh, with global symmetry uh, g. This Chekhovton anomaly is uh, classified by the d plus one dimensional symmetry protective phases, uh, which uh, can also be known as invertible topological phases with global symmetry G. Um, now, today I want to ask uh, another question. Uh, if the d plus one dimensional theory is a topological ordered phase, or more precisely, non-invertible one, uh, can, will it still manifest itself as some kind of anomaly in d-dimensional? Now, the most famous example is the global gravitational anomaly manifests itself as the uh, non-zero uh, non chiral central charge. But my question today is, even if, if free from the uh, protective anomaly, can there still be certain anomalies on the boundary of topological ordered phases? And the purpose of today's talk is to introduce you to an interesting notation, the so-called non-invertible anomaly. Um, the name is kind of obvious. It means that it can be matched by the d plus 1 d topological order phase. Now let me be more precise and focusing on the 1 plus 1 d theory. A 1 plus 1 d theory with non-invertible anomaly is defined by the two features. One is defined on the tower, space-time towers. It has a multi-component partition function with a component index on i. So it forms a, a vector partition function of finite dimension. And second, under, uh, when a, when a space-time torus is under the transformation generated by the so-called modular transformation, the vector partition function is not invariant, but transformed covariantly, actually according to a 2 plus 1D topological data. By topological data, here I mean some um, very easily accessible ones. The number, uh, the anion types, their self-statistics uh, um, <coughs> captured by the T matrix uh, T top, and their mutual statistics and quantum dimension captured by the S top. So the claim is um, the transformation uh, S and t S top and T top on this vector partition functions will induce a modular transformation on the D dimension, or one, uh, one plus one D dimension here. So in other words, the uh, covariance or the breaking of the invariance is captured by this uh, two plus one D topological data. So to motivate, uh, let me ask where such kind of modular covariance can arise. So we can consider a one plus one D theory on the torus and consider the familiar icing CFT. The whole primary field are, there are six uh, primary fields. Say if we pick uh, three of them, one, sigma, and epsilon field, they actually form a partition function that is, in, uh, that is modular uh, invariant on the S and T. So th they are anomaly free, and indeed we know it's described the critical point of transverse icing model in 1 plus 1 D. Now what if we just pick the Hilbert space to contain one and epsilon field? Now, the, its partition function under the S transformation will generate all other sectors, so it's no longer invariant. So how to sort this out? It turns out there is a nice linear combination of them um, as, for, uh, as such that each of them has, uh, each component has uh, non-negative integral multiplicity <coughs> so that each component of partition function has a Hilbert space interpretation and S and T transformation acts on them as the finite dimensional matrices. So this uh, is an example of modular covariance and it's anomalous. 
and it means that the Hilbert space will change under this re-coordination of the space-time lattice. So how to realize this on a lattice? Actually, it can be realized on the boundary of Z2 topological order. So let's start with uh, try to solve this mod, uh, anomaly matching equation with the topological data given by the Z2 topological field theory. Now, here, the bulk data has four kinds of fermions of the vacuum, two bosons and the, fermi uh, and the fermion, and their S and T matrix as such. So uh, we are looking for a four-component punching function satisfying this uh, equation. <coughs> and the benefits of uh, this formalism is that we can study the gap and gap, uh, gap its boundaries uh, simultaneously. So for the, let's start. Uh, for the gaps uh, boundaries, the equation is reduced to this two, uh, this two so that uh, each component is actually just a, a non-negative integer value. And, it's just, uh, and our task is to find the simultaneous eigen, uh, eigen vectors, <coughs> eigen value one for the both uh, equation. And it turns out there are only two independent solutions as such. And they correspond to the E-condensed phase and uh, M-condensed boundary. <coughs> um, to see this, you can see that uh, for the first component, you have a, va a trivial ground state. So the transverse of uh, E to the minus beta H will just give you one. And when E is condensed and bring an E to the boundary will cost no energy. So it also could give you the one on the second component. And similarly for the M-condensed phase. Now we can solve the gapless condition, uh, gapless uh, theory. Without going into many details, I will just let you know uh, the program is just to solve this. Uh, I can still solve this eigenvector equation of searching for a non-negative valued integer uh, matrix. And it turns out that the icing uh, solution I presented before is one such solution. And we have many other solutions, the U1 level 4 CFT and uh, tricritical icing CFT with central charge 7 tenths and many others. So uh, we have to see how it works. Now let me present what does a uh, non-invertible anomaly mean physically. One physical meaning is that it, uh, it indicates the constraint the Hilbert space. Now let's uh, still take the example of Z2 topological order and its gapless uh, bound icing boundary, the modular covariant one. So the, uh, the, uh, the boundary Hamiltonian will just be the Euro icing Hamiltonian. And here, sigma z equals to 1 means that uh, empty site, and minus 1 means that it's occupied by an E particle. And there's a z2 constraint of the whole, uh, whole system that the total number of E particle is even since we cannot create a single E, e charge. <coughs> and this turns out to be a z2 projection on the boundary Hilbert space. Let's see how it works. For the first component, uh, well, let's start with the boundary, uh, uh, boundary condition for the Euro icing model as the pure, start with the periodic boundary condition. And since the, the bulk is trivial, so on uh, this a Z2 constraint restricted to the boundary will become a projection to the Z2 even sector. Then sigma field we know is the Z2 odd field, so it's being projected out. We're left with the vacuum and the epsilon field. The project, uh, pro Partial function is as such. Now we uh, create, consider the second component. We consider start from the gro um, ground state and create a pair of E particle and bring one part E particle to the boundary. It will become a topological defects E. And uh, the one in, in the bulk will become, generates a E, a e anion world line. And when this uh, single E particle is bring, bring to the boundary, since the uh, Bob has an uh, odd number of E particle, so this uh, Z2 constraint restricted boundary becomes an uh, odd constraint. Uh, um, so this uh, means that the boundary must have a Z2 odd parity. Then uh, only the sigma, the sigma field is the Z2 odd, so the partial function will become uh, only a, sig a sigma field. And the Z2 even will be projected out. And now for the third one, we're creating a pair of M particle and bringing one M particle to the boundary becomes a topological defect M. It is actually a pi flux. So E particle going around the boundary will see this M particle as a pi flux. So it will change its boundary condition from 
periodic to anti-periodic. And that means that this uh, E particle has now has a string attached to it. So it becomes the mu field from a sigma field becomes the mu field. So the Pachon function will be uh, our mu field. And we can play the same game for the fermions. And now for this large component, it will only contain the chiral fermions. So we see that uh, this non-invertible anomaly means that our Hilbert space is no longer a tensor product of local Hilbert space. And for each component, uh, it has two constraints. One is that the flux constrain the boundary condition, and the charge can constrain how it's, uh, uh, the Hilbert is projected. And this, uh, this, is, this label is exactly anion label in terms of the quantum double label. So uh, this anion label actually encodes a constraint on the boundary Hilbert space. So this notation, uh, this non-invertible anomaly can have a lot of applications, to name a few. Um, for the double Samuel model, we uh, solved the same equation, and we found that um, the, give a lower bound to the uh, double Samuel model, it must, if the central charge is not zero, it must be greater than great or equal than one, and it actually can be saturated by uh, the rational CFT U1 level two. And uh, this also, the, the framework also works for non-abelian examples. For example, this S3 topological quantum field theory, it can has a boundary realized by SU2 level four with a vector partition function looks like this. So with this, yeah, I will provide you a new view about the boundary edge, uh, a bulk boundary mm -hmm. correspondence. And thank you. Hello, uh, my, name, my name is Xu Dangwen. I'm a postdoc at MIT. This work is in collaboration with Xiao Gang. Uh, so uh, today I, I will uh, introduce a very, very uh, simple story. Um, uh, so it, it was conjectured that uh, the modular data, modular data is the S and T matrix, uh, which is a small part of uh, more cyber cyber data. Uh, it was conjectured that this uh, the modular data is enough to distinguish different modular categories. Then uh, two years ago, there are some counterexamples uh, or we, which were found to. Uh, so who, who made that conjecture? I'm sorry. Who made that conjecture? Uh, uh, conjecture. I, I, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, some people. Uh, yeah, I will show you. Show you the reference maybe later. Yeah, good. <laughs> Uh, there are uh, physical people and mathematician people. I think uh, Zheng Han maybe is one of the uh, <laughs> other who who. I think I'm the first one who wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I will move, move on. Okay. So uh, um, so in this work, we simply show that to distinguish these counterexamples, we we need to uh, construct topological invariant uh, some higher higher genus manifold. <laughs> okay, so first, uh, why are we interested in mo modular category? Because uh, it encodes the topological structure of 2 plus 1D topological order and the 1 plus 1D uh, CFT. Uh, actually, in the following part, I will uh, focus on a very simple uh, class of modular category, which is called the twisted quantum double uh, finite group, uh, which is also called the digraph witten theory. Okay, uh, the modular data, as I mentioned, the S and T matrices. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, who, pro, who proposed this conjecture? One is by uh, Xiaogang, the other is by <laughs> Zheng Han here. 
So uh, as and the T matching matrices are simply the some topological invariants uh, correspond corresponding to the uh, hop link and uh, loop with a kink. Okay. So uh, yeah, this is very surprising, right? Because S and T are very small part of the uh, Mars cyborg data. Uh, then later, uh, two mathematicians they use the computer search. They search all kinds of uh, uh, diagram witness theory. They found that if the, the, the finite group, they, they, they check the, the uh, finite group up to the group order uh, 31, they found that oh, this conjecture was true. This conjecture uh, was true up to uh, uh, the group order 31. Uh, there is no proof. Okay, no proof. Then uh, two years ago, uh, the, the same two, uh, two mathematicians, they, they found some counterexamples. Uh, these counterexamples are twisted quantum double. Okay, the, the finite group is a uh, group order 55, which is larger than, uh, bigger than 30, 31. Okay, uh, so this, this group is very, uh, uh, is a ZQ, uh, same, product, same product Z, ZP, uh, twisted by three cycle, and Q and P are prime numbers. Uh, P can divide uh, Q minus one. They found that, okay, uh, in this, uh, with in this diagram with theory, there are a p p equivalent uh, categories, but there are only three only three sets of modular data, which means uh, the number of uh, the number of modular data is much smaller than the number of e equivalent uh, categories. This means uh, the, the modular data are not enough to distinguish uh, the, uh, the different series. Uh, let me mention the simplest one. The simple simplest counterexample is p equals five, q equals eleven. Uh, there are in total 49 anions in this theory. Okay, then now we, want, we ask the question, uh, the modular data is not enough. What other environments uh, we, we should look for to distinguish different uh, uh, theories? Okay, there are two ways uh, in my mind. Uh, one way is, you, you know, S and T matrix correspond to some uh, link or not environment. So we should uh, look, that, you know, there are infinite number of uh, not and link environment. We can uh, check other environments if they can uh, distinguish these counterexamples. Actually, this is uh, the way Zheng Han in, uh, uh, in Zheng Han's group, uh, they, uh, last year they found that this, this kind of link environment, which is called a uh, white head link. Together with the S and the T matrix, uh, these three data are enough to distinguish the simplest uh, counterexamples. Then later, uh, uh, Zheng Han's students, they did a computer search. They search all the uh, link and the loop environments. Uh, the one uh, highlight here are able to distinguish the simplest uh, counterexamples. Okay, uh, uh, these these two works are for the uh, uh, simplest uh, counterexamples. Then uh, later, uh, the, uh, the, some uh, three mathematicians they show that uh, for a boromian ring. Well, the boromian ring together with an S and T matrix are enough to distinguish all the counterexamples uh, uh, that I mentioned just now. Okay, uh, but uh, to the condensed matter physics, physicist, uh, we uh, at least to me, it's very hard to create uh, such a boromian ring uh, uh, excitation in experiment. Okay, for condensed matter theory, we prefer to. Uh, for, uh, what? What happened? So, uh, uh, yeah, so what I pre we prefer is to we consider the, the ground state on some uh, uh, manifold. Actually, this idea was, was uh, proposed uh, at the very beginning of when, when the topological order was proposed. We, we pre as a condensed matter physics, we prefer the ground state on higher, uh, higher genus manifold. Okay, uh, so <coughs> let me remind you that uh, the mathematician had told us for genus G manifold, we only the mapping class group can be generated by uh, G two uh, G plus one Dan twist. In particular, for the genus two uh, torus, we need a five uh, Dan twist to to generate the mapping class group along the, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five. Uh, okay, five Dan twist. <coughs> So uh, our main idea is to study the, the mapping class group on this genus two manifold. So let, let me remind you that the degenerate ground state on the uh, genus two manifold can be uh, 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 described by the uh, two anion A and B. They are connected by a third anion Z. Okay. Uh, for the now I I, I will do uh, study the, the genus two um, mapping class group representation. Uh, 
Uh, so for the simplest, uh, even for the simplest uh, counterexample uh, with uh, 49 anions, you can find that there is a ground state degeneracy is 18,000, which is actually very very challenging. But uh, yeah, so there are two ways to, to do this calculation. One is to solve the, the modular relations uh, uh, among the five dentist operators. You simply solve the equations. This is method one. Method two is we, we throw the data to the computer, which means we define the <coughs> genus two manifold on a lattice. This is a minimal uh, uh, triangulation of a genus two uh, lattice. We simply uh, define the wave function on this lattice and uh, throw it to computer and uh, do a dent twist and uh, check uh, uh, what is the overlap uh, before and after the dent twist. Then we can get the representation of the mapping class group. Uh, I will skip the, the detail you can find in the paper. So the result is very, uh, very, uh, very simple. Now, as long as we, we can solve the, the mapping class group representation, we, we can. Well, I want to remind you that they, they are not a gauge invariant. Uh, but uh, we want to find some gauge invariant uh, to, uh, uh, quantity. Uh, we can do this by uh, we 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 multiply different uh, uh, representation. Uh, dentist one, dentist two, dentist three, arbitrary uh, combination. Then we do a trace trace over the total Hilbert space of genus two uh, surface. So the, the result is quite uh, uh, simple. For the, for, for the simplest counterexample, there are five different theories. If we uh, check some, uh, choose some topological environment, you can find the result is quite simple. They are different only by uh, four, uh, five different uh, phase factor, uh, uh, exponential uh, i 2 pi over 5 times 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Very uh, simple uh, re result. So, yeah, if we choose different uh, uh, words, uh, different topological environments, I want to remind, uh, uh, tell you that they correspond to different uh, uh, link environment. In particular, this one is uh, the white head link uh, that uh, appeared in Zheng Han's work. Uh, we can also uh, <coughs> produce some other interesting uh, link environments. So this, this can be used to, to distinguish the counterexamples. Um, that, 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 that's it. I think there, uh, there are some other questions that uh, I want to mention before I uh, finish. Uh, so uh, in, in this work, I only check the simplest uh, counterexample. There are a family of counterexamples, which I am not able to do. Uh, the Hilbert space is too, too large. Uh, and uh, so there is a question I want to ask. Uh, what is the minimal uh, data for the complete uh, environment? Uh, yeah. I, I, this is an open question for me. So as a summary, uh, so I want simply want to give you a take-home message. Uh, two is bigger than one. So uh, th this drawing is from a uh, di uh, diagram of the PhD thesis in, you know, you know the, the, the counterexample here is the diagraph witness theory. Actually, yeah, in, in diagraph the PhD thesis, he already put a drawing and put the genus two, <laughs> genus two uh, metaphor in his drawing. It, it seems he, he knew what, what, what is necessary in, 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 to, to distinguish uh, uh, different uh, ca categories. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of studying closed surface genus 2. Yeah, good, closed close surface. Actually, uh, the more essential thing is the punctured torus. You didn't complete this question. You have a question? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't hear the question. Oh, you haven't asked the question. <laughs> Sorry? You haven't asked the question. I haven't asked the question. So it's true that genus 2 gives more conditions beyond genus 1. Yeah, yeah. That's clear, because it includes all the conditions of genus 1 in a, in a few more. But if you work only on the sphere with external points, ah. instead of closing it on the surface, the sphere with external points, a torus, in fact, a sphere with up to, I think, five external points, and a torus with up to two, maybe even just one external point, was shown to give all the information you need. There's nothing beyond that. It's high genus. Yeah. So this, so instead of going to genus two, I'm, I always panic with genus two, where is finite number of points on the plane, something that we, uh, I find more palatable. So I think that should be a lot easier than just going to genus two. But even if you go to genus two, there might be more conditions in genus three. Ah. Whereas the way I phrased it, it's known that you don't have to go beyond that. I see, I see. 
Yeah, I think uh, you, you also have such discussion in your paper with Moore, right? In 1989. Yeah. I don't remember the paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can, can I just say one thing? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's exactly like how we were thinking. Uh, the problem was the genus puncture, one puncture torus, is not intrinsic. So it's very difficult to use as a environment. I mean, the puncture S is not. Yeah, the puncture S. The puncture S means it's not intrinsic. What do you mean? It depends on gauge choice. It's not environment, so it's very hard to compare. Yeah, the, the, the diagonal part is the environment. Yeah. Here, here we, uh, yeah. Although the puncture as a metric is not environment, we, we, we multiply some metric together and do the trace. This quantity is the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Let me make sure I understood the solution you proposed. You just take. Theory on two and look at the ground state degeneracy. Yes. And that distinguishes the different. Yeah, different. Uh, for this particular. Theory. So it's not just the degeneracy. I think. Uh, no, not the degeneracy. The representation. Uh, I mean, uh, the Hilbert space mm -hmm. is the, 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 the uh, eighteen thousand. But we 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 do some uh, or dentist in this Hilbert space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the degeneracy. Yeah. That's what in there. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about some work with Sagar Vijay that I did about uh, uh, subsystem SPTs from self-consistent wave functions. So uh, let me begin. So the motivation, which is sort of canonical by now, uh, when we study SPTs, for example, in 2D, is that uh, usually when we have a SPT, we can consider uh, gauging the global symmetry. And the example is we have a Levin-Hu SPT. I gauge the symmetry. They give rise to two different string net models. And one is the toric code, and this levin Blue SPT gauges to the double semion model. And now we know that um, these two have different uh, consistency <coughs> conditions. One is when the toric code, when you fuse the two strings, you don't get a minus sign, where the double semion, you get a minus sign. And uh, since there's no smooth way to connect between the two, uh, it says that the two SPTs are different uh, phases. And um, so uh, one naive question you could probably ask is like you can have a minus sign, but why is uh, why can't you use any phase factor? And the answer is simple. It's because of this uh, Pentagon equation or a consistency condition. You go through two different paths and you find that uh, the sign you approve has to be, has to, in this case it's e i theta square, and it has to be one. So this phase factor you can do um, for this f move can only be plus or minus one. So. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, lately in the fracton community, people have been studying subsystem symmetry. And what are these? These are symmetries that can act on uh, rigid subdimensional manifolds. For example, in 1D, you can have uh, a, a spin system with line symmetry where you flip only um, a spin in one horizontal and one vertical line. It can also be planar symmetry, or it can also act on fractal uh, uh, sub-manifold uh, sub as well. And by gauging or by some duality, people have shown that there are dual to symmetry breaking versions of subsystem symmetry or fracton order, or they also have self duality. Now, the, the key point is that uh, in 1D, for example, if I have a global Z2 symmetry, the domain walls, uh, they're allowed to hop. For example, if I flip this red spin over here, it just hops this domain wall here. But now in the subsystem symmetry case, the, the domain walls, quote unquote, are excitations of the dual theory. They naturally uh, form pairs of four. 
And suppose I flip one of these red spins, instead of just hopping this uh, domain wall, it creates uh, three more. So it's not quite a hopping. So in, in, in fractons, people say that the excitation in the dual picture have restricted mobility because you cannot just hop them. But similar to Love and Goo, you can ask, is there an equivalent way? Can, you, can I just hop this with a sign and ask, can I get other uh, wave functions that preserve subsystem symmetry? And that's the approach I'm going to be taking today. So I just want to generalize the usual way we view 2D SPTs is that you put some symmetry, you gauge it, you get some quantum double, or, and you want to see, I fluctuate the strings, and I get some uh, uh, solution, which is classified, for example, group cohomology, or this diagram written theory. And when I ungauge it back, I get a non-trivial SPT. So what I want to do for subsystem <coughs> symmetry is very similar. I gauge it. I might get some symmetry breaking model. I get some fracton model. I fluctuate whatever the excitations are in the dual theory. It might be domain walls. It might be cages. And in the end, I will get some, the result is some classification or partial classification based on a homology of a certain complex. And when I ungauge that back, I find that I get some subsystem SPT. So let me uh, state the result first, which is that the search I'm going to show you, it, the input instead of, uh, sorry, in the previous slide, we use only symmetry. But here, I'm going to input the, both the symmetry and the lattice structure. So in, in this search, the, the search sort of knows about translational symmetry, and that's sort of something assumed. And what it finds is that it, don't, it doesn't only find the strong SPT phase, it also finds the crystalline phase, which are the weak versions. And moreover, the search is able to find non-stabilizer Hamiltonians. And one other gimmick is that um, I can always just include time reversal, which is defined as complex conjugation, and it gives me more stuff automatically. So uh, it produces the, uh, the results known from group cohomology in the global cases, and it gives some new interesting, for example, crystalline phases of fractons or crystalline SSPTs in, in these uh, subsystem symmetry cases. So uh, let me, before I do the subsystem case, let me just show you how, to, how, to, how this works. So I, actually, the easiest example is just in 1D, where a global symmetry, and I have a Z2 SPT. If you know group homology, you say there's no SPT, but <coughs> I have translation in this case because I have a, a, a uniform lattice. So actually, there is one crystalline phase. And uh, what I'm going to do is, in the dual theory, I'm going to write down the domain walls as black, and no domain walls as white. And I'm going to just write down a general matrix that creates domain walls. From the vacuum, I can create a pair. I can hop them left. Oh, this is wrong. The left or right. And from two of them, I can annihilate the, to the vacuum. But in general, I'm going to just say what I can just, I'm just going to say I can have these phases in general. And I'm going to see what solutions I can come up with. So now I want to find the consistency conditions for M. And it turns out that in this case, there are two, two such consistencies. One is that m squared equals 1 is just like I have a pair. I create from the vacuum, I create a pair. I annihilate it back. That's, I get these equations. And the second is that I have two uh, m's on nearest neighbor sites that they have to commute. And these give me two other equations. So once you have that, you can, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this formally. So in general, what we do is, from this matrix, you can write down all these phase factor as a vector phi. And the equivalence, uh, sorry, and the consistency conditions is written as a matrix where C is this matrix from the previous slide. C times phi equals 0. And what I'm just doing is I'm just solving for, in this case, the kernel of this matrix C. Now, this matrix M, uh, which tells me how I can hop the excitations, I can conjugate it by a unitary that preserves the symmetry. So in this case, for Z2, it turns out to be a phase gate, where I apply a phase, I conjugate M by a phase gate at every site. And that turns out to give me a different M with different val values of phi. And so phi is equivalent, actually equivalent to uh, some G times uh, var phi, where this var phi is this, uh, this uh, phase factor in the phase gate. And G is this certain matrix. So after I found the solutions, I need to mod out by this equivalence relation, which is the image of G. And so 
nicely what you get is that the solutions of this matrix, the allowed matrix, is a certain chain complex. And what you find is just the homology of this chain complex. And you, you also have that uh, this phase, since it leaves the commutations of M, it implies that uh, this, this uh, C times G is 0. So you actually have a chain complex. And the phases you search are just the homology of this chain complex. Um, so um, in this case, how do you? One way to see what the solutions are, how many solutions you have, is you take this consistency matrix C, and uh, you diagonalize it more and more specifically. You find the Smith normal form of C, um, and uh, you just get these uh, eigenvalues and. These just tell you the number of solutions. And so let me focus on the case without time reversal. You get this matrix tells you that you get one non-trivial solution, which is a Z2. And this zero eigenvalue says that there is a continuous parameter of solutions. But in this case, it gets a mod out by this equivalence class, and you actually throw away the zero. But now, if I want to add time reversal, uh, time reversal requires my matrix M to be real, so it actually it makes this continuous solution discrete, and I get an extra Z2. So I can just basically read out the solution as, without time reversal, the non-zero, the non-zero uh, and non-one eigenvalues, and with time reversal, it's just I add a Z2 for every every zero eigenvalue I find. So for the example I gave in this case, you find uh, without time reversal you find this solution, uh, which corresponds to, instead of having a plus, you have a minus. So what that means is whenever you hop a domain wall, you get a minus sign. And whenever you create two domain walls, you get a minus sign. And that is exactly the crystalline SPT, which, which is in each unit cell, you have a Z2 charge at every point. Now, for without time reversal, you have this solution, which corresponds to uh, this Haldane SPT. So you only get a minus sign when you create two domain walls. And a way to view this is for every domain wall, I attach a sign i to it. So it's sort of like this decorated domain wall picture where for every I have a, a time reversal charge attached to a domain wall, if you want to view it that way. But so this one is crystalline. But in fact, this one is well known and is not crystalline. So you don't actually need time reversal. Sorry, you don't need translation to protect this space. So actually, it can find both the weak and strong uh, SPTs. Um, as a second example, we can consider, go back to the original question, consider the Z2 SPT on a triangular lattice. In the dual picture, is a honeycomb. And the usual solution is you just created one string from the vacuum. And that object is just six axes here. And what you can solve this consistency equation and you find one non-trivial solution without time reversal. And when, when you read it out, you get this complicated ma matrix. But actually, you can simplify it. And it turns out to be exactly the same uh, stabilizer as the double semion. Uh, the only difference is that it's uh, in a different uh, gauge. So with, using the gauge constraint, you can show that uh, this is in the same one as the one uh, originally proposed. And, and actually, this one was the. Uh, the, the form of the M was the one wrote, written down by Freeman and Hastings in their generalized double semion model. And I think maybe Lucas will talk about that tomorrow. Um, just, this is just uh, uh, global symmetry. right? So now for 2D, let's go to line symmetry, where I, have, uh, where I can only flip spins in or either horizontal or vertical lines. So the usual product state corresponds to this ferromagnet. But I can also have a crystalline one, where I just negate the sign, and it's just I have a Z2 charge uh, associated to every lattice site. The non-trivial one turns out to be one solution is this wen plaquette model. And this wen plaquette model is dual to a 2D cluster state um, on, on the square lattice. And in fact, these two are different phases, because we know that in the dual side, the degeneracy on the torus for these two is different. So the when plaquette also, you can view it as a sub, having a subsystem symmetry, but it spontaneously breaks a subsystem symmetry, and you have this ground state degeneracy. So it sort of shows that the dual pictures are different. Uh, the, the, 
the SSPT for the product state and the 2D cluster state, they belong to different phases. And with uh, lines symmetry, if I add a global time reversal, you find an extra generator, and the corresponding hopping matrix is this one, and I can view it as attaching an I to every uh, domain wall. And the corresponding cluster state is this sort of weird looking uh, graph where it seems like there are two different cluster states that are not connected, uh, but in fact, it's preserved under time reversal, global time reversal, and this 2D line symmetry. Um, my last example is consider the checkerboard model, which is a fracton model. Without time reversal, you find uh, uh, three generators, and these three generators correspond to uh, cluster states, um, stacks of 2D cluster states on this, on the, this, check, uh, on this FCC lattice. And uh, one interesting thing is you can also get uh, decorations of 2D cluster states on this, uh, perpendicular to this 1, 1, 1 plane, which is a triangular lattice. And with time reversal, you also have two more generators, which is, uh, and one interesting thing I want to point out is this model which is a non-stabilizer model. It's protected by time reversal and planar symmetries. And it's a, a, a hypercluster state where every triangle I draw here in blue is a control control Z gate. And what happens in the fracton case is that you have X type fractons and Z type fractons. And time reversal actually permutes the two types of fractons. So I'm out of time. So just a quick comment that we can find both uh, weak and strong. I haven't found a fracton with a, uh, with a strong fracton phase. So uh, by searching larger matrices, I probably would uh, hopefully <coughs> will be able to find that. The procedure can generalize to any ZN, although I still want to know how to deal with non-abelian groups. And for these crystalline phases, uh, I know people have been working on the, 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 real, uh, the, the global symmetry or topological order with some decoration construction. It would be nice to see how to do that for fractons as well. So, thank you. So, yeah. so the 2D cluster state is a strong SSPT, right? Yeah, um, the, the way I was arguing by, by strong here is sort of, I, I just mean that without translational symmetry, it would still be in Tax, um, although it might be different from what people have been defining as strong. Here, I've just been looking at the ground state degeneracy on, on different, on the torus, and it's different from the usual one. Yeah. M is just a matrix that uh, creates domain walls or whatever the dual uh, excitations are. So for our 2D uh, symmetry, uh, 2D with global symmetry is just a string. It could be domain <coughs> walls in 1D. For these subsystem symmetries, they are like, they, you have to create them in pairs of, in groups of four. So you can hop them around and see what the consistency conditions are. So this talk is about 4D Yang-Mills theory as a boundary condition of five-dimensional uh, TQRT involving uh, higher, higher form symmetry or higher gate field. And subtitle is related to higher anomaly symmetry and higher cobordism. And uh, this work is done collaborate with two <coughs> graduate students to highlight. Uh, one is actually the first student I supervise. She is a female and she is uh, a mathematician uh, working uh, right now is in Yao Science Center in Tsinghua. And the other is a grad student from Princeton University in Qingzhen. And he's applying grad school this year. And I want to bring your attention for his applications. 
And these are based on two papers. I will say 1904 or 1812. All right. So Luna Festival is coming on Friday. <laughs> and other than watching the moon, uh, there's a tradition of people eating the moon cake. And this will be the most technical <laughs> slide of my talk. <laughs> so you watch the exterior and try to guess what's inside. It's very hard to see unless you try to cut into too hard. And sometimes you'll come as a surprise. They have so many possibilities. You cannot really tell from the exterior. Uh, but for quantum system, it's not, the, not quite the same. Is that uh, the exterior and interior somehow may correlate in some way because of entanglement. And today I'm going to show you uh, some five dimensional of kind of mooncake I look for, such as when I make a cut, the four dimensional theory will be a SU2 gauge group Young Mill theory uh, with the topological theta term, without supersymmetry, and it's a pure without matter field. And generically, I want to put on the curve space time. And uh, young meals can be solved as a boundary conditions. However, as uh, Suda said, that uh, Shreda said that uh, uh, condensed like flat space time. And uh, the difference is that uh, in flat space time, we need to have a more uh, this uh, defects, tunneling monopoles to detect. While in the curved space time, we, we actually don't. So I will utilize both, but I'll focus on generic space time. And another highlight is that a lot of condensed people study the boundary theory is actually free. It's quadratic, it's free, a Z2 gauge theory, free fermion, but this is not intrinsically strongly coupled into interacting theory. All right, so uh, the insight come from uh, audience, people in the audience, Anton, Zoha, and Nati Cyberg, 1703 L. Co., find out a hint for the higher Kerfu anomaly involving time reversal Z2T and one form electric center symmetry Z21E. And this be provide two, two form background for your B. And T will have a linear probe. So they indicate that there's a TBB type of anomaly and return as a bi dimensional term. Uh, so, what we want to do today is that uh, the higher anomalies, or Tohu anomalies of uh, global symmetry indicate that uh, to realize O higher n bone global symmetry locally on n synthesis, then the 4D young males actually require to become a boundary of bi dimensional higher symmetry protected topological space. You know, it's higher SPTs. So these are generalizations to non unsightedness People talk to non unsimplexedness So we would like to determine and define mathematically the precise bi-dimensional high SPTs. And strictly, uh, maybe for some people, it's not quite a good 4D theory unless coupled to 5D. And some people will debate that actually 4D theory is as good as just a tofu anomaly. Either way, is fine. All right. So let's go to fix the terminology. Uh, for mathematicians like uh, uh, Dan, then free, he would like to say this will be invertible TQFT. And for quantum information theories, you should say this spoke state would like to look for the moon cake is a short range in tangle states. And for some condensed people, they like to say SPD states. Well, in any case, they have this two symmetry, time reversal and one form center. So this is the picture. Well, to fix the theory, study the action, and we just do the path into, of course, there's a major of a gauge field. Well, there's a coupling for Q for the kinetic terms. There's a topological term labeled by theta and trace f f. Okay, so time reversal is a discrete Z2 symmetry transform f f to minus sign. And it only preserves itself to zero and pi with two pi periodicity. While t will flee to minus t x preserve. While the one point symmetry will shift the gauge field globally by a flat connection, when it acts on the closed Wilson loop, it will change the phase by minus one. So we can think this in a topological picture, when the Wilson line S1 circle link with the two surfaces in five uh, four-dimensional space-time, then such a link process uh, will give rise a minus sign. The correspondent charged object for the one form electric Z2 symmetry is this array circle, while the electric two-surface operator is the blue, 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 uh, blue, blue surface. All right, it's a charge operator, a symmetry generator. And we can easily <coughs> transform this picture to Hilbert space uh, space picture. So just change the line x by two dimensional surfaces and whether they come in or not, give a minus sign. Uh, in SU2 gauge theory, we don't have a dynamical Tahu line. We only have a dynamical Wilson line, electric surface operator. But we can also have a probe Tahu line as a background. So like Max did a tunnel in this uh, magnetic monopole, you will give a wall line or a Tahu line. These are just messy objects in the in this theory, in the pure SU2. So that's a background probe. And there's also a magnetic surface, it's a background probe. Uh, in, in the whole message here for the higher symmetry, just that it can connect to a topology of links. 
Uh, however, as you notice, so the color I draw here is that these two colors are the same as ray. I can actually feel in the S1 circle by a background probe of magnetic surface operator. So let's draw next. So the Wilson line will be a charged object bounded by the surface of magnetic surface operator. And since we are probing the theory by background field, we can decorate additional possible time symmetry, for example, time reversal. And in condensed matter, you should think about this 1 plus 1D AKLT of Houdini chain with spin 1 on each side. There's a dangling spin 1 half. We can decorate these things on this Wilson line. As you notice, the boundary of the Houdini chain will have a spin 1 half dangling. And that also means that Kramer's uh, property of the Wilson line will be uh, doubled if I have a Houdini chain. If not, it will be singular. So we can change the Wilson line Kramer singular to W by decorating this term. We still have an additional uh, topological term. So the topological term for Houdini chain is W1TM of a first deformity class of a tangent bundle square. Well, there's still W2TM we can decorate. And this will change the Bosonio of Fermioni statistic of Wilson line. And K1, K2 are Z2 class labels. So they are two times two, two full class. And that will, that, that will call full sibling, so the gauge theory. These are generic, not the restrict to SU2 gauge theory alone. Uh, however, how do we think uh, to, uh, to, to make ourselves comfortable as a condensed, condensed matter? Okay. What's wrong? Yeah, decrease the trend. What's wrong with that? All right. Uh, how do we make ourselves, maybe give me one more minute for that. So how do we make ourselves more comfortable for this from condensed matter point of view? Uh, is that uh, the uh, gauge, gauge, the Wilson line is actually emergent uh, at the low energy IR, while deep in the UV we still have uh, local Hilbert space of a quantum matter field. Those quantum matter field will cover to the emergent gauge field and those massive matter field, you cannot see a deep IR. And those quantum matter can have uh, on-site properties such that it can be cremous doubly or singly or bosonic fermionic. And those things coupled to the, the gauge field uh, will give rise to the property of those Wilson line. So even though there is no matter when you see the IR, but you can still engineer something at the top uh, UV. And that's what the latest people will ask me, how do I give rise to this full version of a gauge theory? It's not uh, difficult. And I should mention that uh, if we uh, try to naively uh, just say that the, the field stress is BA, then basically the relation I'm outlining BA will be curvature of bounded surface is a constraint between the curvature DA and the background B field and those K1, K2 terms. However, this is not precise because this only works for Arvelian theory. And the Arvelian gauge theory actually has been uh, pioneered by work of uh, Chong here, Sento, and uh, Liu Jun and Bo Xian uh, later. OK, but we need a non abelian version. So how do we do this? Is that uh, we should uh, promote, for example, the SU2 field stress to U2 and subject to a, a bundle constraint like this. So the idea is that uh, uh, treat the SU2 gauge theory as a SO3 uh, gauge bundle, such as a gauge bundle W2 of this B, PSU2 is SO3, subject to this constraint. And that C1 is the first chain class for the U2 uh, principal U2 bundle. And this will be a constraint from the background B field for the one bone Z2E symmetry and W1 T square as time reversal probe as a quantum statistics probe of Fermi boson. So this gives rise to a full family. Uh, while the zero zero, the first index K1 will give distinguish the singular or double of the Kramer's T squared plus or minus one. The second index will relate to the bosonic or fermionic statistics. Okay. Don't know why that. Uh, let's go back. I don't know what you see. Uh, okay, so so now let's compare the derivation of our work with uh, the inferential work of uh, the 1703. In their work, they put a theory on oriental manifold coupled to B field with a linear T transformation. Uh, today, we would like to put this on the unoriented manifold, also coupled to B field. But it turns out that when we write this action in four dimension, this term is not quite well defined in 4D. So we need to kind of make sense of things by extending the theory to five dimension. And then it turns out the five dimensional tend to make sense. We already discovered a 4D, 5D couple system. Okay, and the derivation I'll skip, I just give you the result. Uh, so the all common term you will see is the TBB term, proportional linear to T and quadratic to B. And that term actually can be made more, 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 more precise, written as uh, uh, using the steen roa or Pondrian-Yangen algebra, a square term. So this will be something like this, it's SQ1, or SQ2, SQ1, B. And there is a term closely related to TBD. It's basically written as this way. And this is Matu class, which means when I have a two of this, 
system it can trivial. Uh, moreover, with Kramer's doublet, like Bosani case, actually there is a TQB term, which means uh, qubit in T were linear in B. <coughs> and such term can also be written precisely as uh, W1 uh, TM cube B, and a close manual with W1 TM square SQ1 B. And additionally, there is a WZW, which is waste you know, written like term, a counter term. And such a term turns out is not usual case, which is a Z class. Here we have a, a 4D four dimensional term. Uh, it's like Z4 class. And that term cannot be written in uh, four dimensional directly. It's not well defined. But we need to write it in a five dimensional term. But such a five dimensional term written on a closed manifold somehow is trivial. And when I put on five dimensional manifold with a 4D boundary, this will be non trivial. So that's uh, actually the way we write a 5D term. I should write SQ1. But uh, I write one and a half delta just for some people to understand. OK. Uh, so I review the system one. And uh, for then, you would like to know what's the Bodhisattva group. And this will be a Bodhisattva group the O, uh, unorientable with B squared Z2. And there's a Z2 fold class. And these are the four classes for the generator. We turns out that the first three generator linear combination give rise to the uh, anomalies associated to this four semblance of the SU2 gauge theory. Well, the last one actually is interesting. Uh, the last one is used also in another SU2 gauge theory, but with, with a matter field of spin 3 half fermion. And this will be uh, using a new SU2 anomaly in this paper. In, in addition, when we check the grand unified theory, like SO10, uh, there's uh, so addition, important condition for anomaly free conditions, the first term. And uh, uh, for U1 gauge theory, such a term is also useful. Uh, from by people like Chong here, Sento, and the John. Okay, all right. So that's uh, the story. So, but to get a gauge theory it may not be easy from condensed matter. But there's one way to go to something familiar. Start from a four-dimensional SPT space <coughs> without gauge field. We can actually classify the SU2 symmetry with time reversal SPT space, and such that the uh, uh, Free and Hopkins tell us that there is some extension we need to do, and there are four classes for condensed matter theorists. These are the global symmetry you need to care between time reversal, Bosani, or Fermionic Z2 symmetry. So we also uh, consider some of these cases. A few cases are already known from condensed matter people, but some of them, Bosani cases, more, uh, is more new in our work. And once I, so in this case, we don't need five dimensional bulk. It's, 5D is trivial, while the 4D uh, is lived, lived, lived by its own dimension. But we want to gauge the SU2. So once I gave SU2, it becomes the system one I start with. It's SU2 young mill theory for some of them, OK? Not all of them. Some of these SPD start states gauge SU2 will become this young mills. And uh, the one phone symmetry will emerge if I want to define the one phone in an unsight, unsimplex way, on um, one simplex way. Then actually, I need a five dimensional uh, inverted TQRT. I can further gauge one phone Z2E to turn the theory to SO3 young mills. And this was spontaneous break time reversal because the set up here, this did change to 4 pi or 8 pi, depending on spin or non-spin uh, manifold. But uh, the 5D bulk was still preserved time reversal symmetry. And also still have additional dynamic gauge field. So I want to study this 5D TQRT. And I suppose my statistician would like to call this a higher category version of something in five dimension. This will be long range Nintendo states. This will be symmetry enriched topological SCT states. OK. So I studied the link, uh, we studied the link invariance together with our collaborators about uh, five dimensional S5 decomposed by a sub and uh, we invent this diagram to do the link invariant. It turns out interesting triple link, quadruple link uh, with related to the three loop breaking, four loop breaking statistics show up and also bromine ring by the spinning version of length. So spin rotate to one higher dimension. And they are interesting links. We determine the general link invariant for them. But the configuration I drew is a particular one to be detected by the link invariant. Okay. So our contribution for the work is precise, unique, or maybe mathematical SPD state to written a TQFT uh, partition function for this young mill theory. We determine the breaking statistics. By given the kinetics and symmetry and topology, the kinetic can be determined by the passing rule partition function. We use the higher symmetry, put on an orientable manifold, we should be able to determine the anomaly completely at this stage, at least. And which all can write as a topological phase in one high dimension. So they should be going to a dynamical constraint. So uh, what's the constraint? There are several possibilities that happen. Uh, standard low tells us that the Z2 time reversal spontaneous broken. Well, we also can have a one-fold symmetry breaking, which is deconfinement, like deconfinement of CFT. 
We can also have a construction of full symmetry extent, but now if you get phase, these are beyond Higgs mechanism. We have a ma massive whole symmetry extension. Okay, and if you are not familiar with this work, then uh, Edward will give a very good uh, review on YouTube. And we generalize this approach to higher symmetry. And there's a specific statement we can make for bosonic case. Uh, when dimension is larger than certain d equal to two, we always can find such a symmetry extent get phase to such an anomaly. But for Fermioni case, there are recent uh, uh, progress by Max here and some of me work, and also uh, Yohe here. They have a more, very general statement about Fermioni anomaly. Okay, so in, it turns out this Young-Mill theory indeed I can have a fully symmetric, a fully symmetric extent anomaly gap phase. I can find the extension to find gap phase. But if I want to get more familiar phase of a T T, I need to do some gauge uh, by gauging the extent symmetry. And I should say that this TQFT go back to the work of a surface topological order Ashlin and Centro et al. But they are considered a lower dimensional version in uh, 3D. Here we are considered 4D. So the gate, we gauge the extent one form symmetry. <coughs> Turns out it will break another one form symmetry. And these are shown in the work. And uh, Clay Cordoba and Kentaro Omori, <coughs> my colleague at IS, actually proved a no go theory. Uh, they give a talk, said that, that indeed, you cannot have a fully symmetry for something, a number TQFT to be a, a low energy for this SU3 on your theory. But there's other candidates we also find for the CFT. Okay, so to end the talk, uh, I show you one, two, three, and we have a following work that we compute a uh, class of fiction of a higher SPT by some cobaltism, and we give some topological terms. And the ongoing time of long model is that I like this model very much, and I can change this to a 5D long range entangled state for the young male couple. I don't know how, how much these are far away from something related to a higher dimensional long range entangled like gravity and gauge theory. And that's something I would like to talk to you if you have any idea. Thank you for staying tuned with me. Right. Yes. Just to clarify, this yes. is not what's called Wesumino term in the Carter Lagrange. Okay. Is that no? It's a question. I, I think is no. Yeah. I, I, only, I didn't. I say Wesumino term just based on that. I, I can write this. I want to write this term in four dimensions, but I cannot make it well defined in four D unless I try to write it in five dimension. Ah. But, but then that term you write on five dimension on closed manifold will be trivial. And only when you have an open boundary, you have a boundary, then that becomes non-trivial. So I don't know any way to write current algebra. And also, these are like a discrete class. Yeah. But I, I, these are not anomaly. We even have a discussion. I thank you even on the acknowledgement. <laughs> and that term is not anomaly. So the, the only term I know is anomaly is this first two terms. Yeah, next. Questions? First, um, do you have a complete? Uh, Action for the case of bound boundary. Yes. Why, yes. Uh, for pa passing rule. Yes. Yeah. We can write it. Once we have this action, uh, this uh, partition boundary, uh, this uh, this terms, we can just write in, in passing rule. So yes. So next ask that. Uh, uh, yeah. We have a way to couple forty five D together. Not not in my slides, but uh, yeah. But we can write together. So the whole system will be well defined. You can share gauge invariant, etc. Yeah. So I will call this will be a full model. And the second question, the, but I don't quite get There is no surface symmetric topological order for? Right. That, so there is a no-go theorem in a, maybe two appeal book <coughs> by Lane. They claim that the uh, general statement about this type of anomaly, uh, you cannot, involving this uh, TBB type of anomaly, you cannot have a symmetric gap T of T. But I can actually find a symmetric extent to trivialize the boundary by extension. But once I gauge the extent symmetry, you will spontaneously break another symmetry. And that's a familiar anomaly for the zero form symmetry in two dimensions. Yeah. We find the work in this case for this paper and zero form. But it turns out this will be similar case for 4 d And the, 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 I understand the way they prove things is based on try to pull this on some topology evolving sphere like S1 times S2 times S2. And there are some constraints show up. And I talked to Lane. I think it's pretty trustworthy about the statement. I was a bit surprised because I find I find this symmetry extent TQLT possible, 
but once I try to control a surface TQLT, it doesn't work. And uh, there's a no go then. Yeah. So you, this one is rule out for this SU2, say like this one. So you're saying there's a theory which cannot, the anomalies cannot be captured by some sort of Right, right, that's right. So the yeah. theory is what, a 3D SU2 gauge theory without the uh, fundamental and time reversal? A 4D. Today is 4D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, it has time reversal? Yes, time reversal. One point. Yeah, one point zero. That's right, correct. So it's either want to break time reversal or? Right. Either break time reversal or break one phone or being gapless. Yeah, gapless is one. Yeah. But it cannot be fully symmetric gap. But I have a fully symmetric gap by extend the symmetry. That that's kind of a change in the symmetry. If I change one phone z two to one phone z z four symmetry, actually I can I can still construct. So these are more subtle things. Sorry, this is the one with the steepest number. Yeah. Uh, everything is with the Okay, more questions, that's time, John. Thank you.